thank you, uh, Ross Ashkoff, for agreeing to come on uh, onto this uh, interview about uh, Russia Today. Uh, you are the front man for a show called Renegade Inc. It, you, you produce it as well as as front it, don't you? It, can you tell us what your role is on that? Yeah, so I present it, um, uh, and we produce the team produce it, and they do a great job uh, doing that. Um, and we are an independent production company that sells the programs to various broadcasters all around the world. Um, one of our contracts is uh, with RT. And the reason we chose to um, work with them is uh, because they are totally independent. They give you total independence editorially. Uh, and um, that was way more appealing. Uh, than going and working for another broadcaster where you've got a massive contract which tells you what you can and can't say, uh, who you can and can't criticise, who you, which stories you can and can't cover. Um, so really for us, it was, an, it was such a straightforward decision. And at the time, uh, people, lots of my family, loads of friends and people, when they um, uh, realised I'd turned down another broadcaster in the, in the UK, um, which um, was, you know, and still is a big name, um, I won't mention them, uh, but uh, you'll find that a lot of talent are leaving there at, at that time. I'm sure you can work out who it is. Uh, and when we were sitting there uh, with those guys um, and they were saying, we're going to determine pretty much through contractually um, what, what we say, what we don't say. And also we're going to send stuff that's contentious upstairs. And that's code for it's not going out because it's going to hit the lawyers. Um, it was a no brainer to go with RT over everybody else because we sat in the meeting and I said to the commissioning editor, listen, I need three things from you. One, um, loyalty, two, patience while we build an audience and three, editorial control. He hasn't and they haven't ever gone back on their word. They've been absolutely immaculate on their word. And also they've been immaculate when it comes to contractual uh, um, uh, uh, arrangements and basically everything else. They've been a, a dream uh, broadcast partner. Well, people say you would say that, wouldn't you? But the, the, the thing is, but, but the yeah, thing is, you're people, saying that you've yeah, had more would say edit that. Don't people, say you've had more editorial, you feel you've got more editorial control with RT than you would have with other No, no, I don't feel I don't feel that. That is a fact. We've made 282 episodes of Renegade Inc. It's consistently at the top of the ratings on that channel. Uh, our dwell times are huge in comparison. The only reason we can get those figures is because they give us control to make the programmes. And if you go back to when television was good, it, uh, people, like, uh, people at the BBC would allow programme makers to go out and make programmes. Now, the BBC and other people get management consultants in to work out who the audience is and then try and match the programme with that audience. That's never going to work. Can you give some examples, I, mean, I don't know if it's off the top of your head, of yeah. actual programmes and, and subjects that you've covered on RT that you don't think you could have put out on one of those other channels, especially like the one you said that you could have had a deal with? Pretty much every program. We um, made a, a program called the uh, Hillsborough of British Business, talking about the horrific crimes that RBS, the bank, uh, had, uh, committed uh, under GRG, their, um, well, it was called internally the abattoir of this place, because what it would do, it would, take uh, very good businesses in, apparently restructure them, actually just slaughter them, and then sell them to a vulture fund in America. And we followed that story very carefully and put it out. Now, and, and what has happened since is Ross McEwen's lost his job. Now, I'm not saying we're fully responsible for this, but that the media played a role in it because it turned the heat off on, on it. No one else would touch it. No one else was allowed to yeah, touch it. You know, would, it would, a British, would a British state broadcaster allow you to put a programme out about RBS, whose biggest um, shareholder is the British taxpayer, because Gordon Brown stuffed it up so badly? Answer, probably no. And, and if they would let you put that programme out, why aren't they doing that journalism? When we're talking about, um, about funding from Russia, whether they're telling you what to do or not, are you in some way influenced by you know knowing where your money is coming from you're not going to do a big expose of russia's corruption or something like that it's not that i know you know which side my bread's buttered on it, it, it is the fact that i can i can go anywhere with the programming can i ask you because they've got very long we're, we're running okay, out of time chasing money by the way yeah. i wouldn't have gone with rt because they haven't got big budgets at all uh, what does it say about the, the the argument that we can't have a channel on because it's a propaganda tool do you think people can't uh quit, can't ha don't have a critical faculty enough to say maybe this isn't 
true. Maybe I should look at some other information. The, the point is that when everyone's thinking the same thing, nobody is thinking. So you need plurality in the media, you need view, different views, and you need an audience who, if you want a vital democracy, you need an audience who is able, or who are able to go out and read many different sources and then make their own mind up. Because it's very dangerous if you're saying, well, actually, us politicians will uh, decide on what you sh should or, or shouldn't uh, listen to and therefore think. You need those all those diverse views in the media and all those diverse opinions so a in educated and engaged audience can make their own mind up. How do you feel about the potential for RT losing its license with Ofcom? I think, I think it would be a very dark day in the UK if we politicise uh, an independent regulator, Ofcom. Every week we make a programme, uh, we really um, uh, appreciate that Ofcom are a presence in the country because it means that we look after every single uh, full stop, every word, every paragraph, and we make sure that we're absolutely within those guidelines. Um, I think that it would be a really dark day uh, if Ofcom had then uh, bent to pressure from people like Keir Starmer. I tell you what this is really about. Politicians have dumbed education down so much and they've dumbed down the populace so much that um, they don't want people thinking there is an alternative. So the neoliberal thing is, Tina, there is no alternative, right? So they're saying this is the only way we go. And you're seeing that now with Sir Keir Starmer. You're seeing that now. He's backing NATO heavily. He's a hawk. He's saying this is the only way we can go. He's kicking out the left. He's getting rid of Jeremy Corbyn. Dad, all the stuff, Tina. So and, I, and what we're saying in our program, and that's the tagline, think differently, uh, what we're saying is there is an alternative. In fact, there are thousands of alternatives of how you can organize politics, the economy, um, the environmental problem, you know, the, the uh, socioeconomic problems, thousands of different ways. Well, they don't want to hear that because they want A, power, B, money, C, control, D, um, uh, obedience. You know, the, the list goes on. And this is a this is a dark uh, area because uh, what we do with audiences is stretch them a little bit. And with other broadcasters, they say, no, 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 dumb it down. Don't use that word, use this word. Don't. And you say, no, no, if you do stretch an audience a little bit, guess what happens? It means that, that they start to think about it afterwards. Like, oh, that's quite interesting, I hadn't thought about that. That's what public uh, service broadcasting should be about. Not mm. dancing with Bambi on ice with celebrities, you know. I'm not sure if I'll be getting um, flack. I might be chucked out of a Labour Party properly for even talking to you on the, on the Zoom. Um, but um, I, think, I think just to make a last point, that's the other point, Crispin, uh, on this. And I've had lots of texts, as you can imagine, over the last um, four days or so. Uh, and one of the things here is um, to create a chilling effect on free, on free speech. So... Like you've just said, oh, if I even if I talk to you, so I, I become some sort of social leper because I, I work with the Russians, and you know, and and it works to a point less and less now because people understand that you know we, we are independent, we've got that reputation, but in the early days it was very difficult to get guests because you know they've been given a diktat from um, various people in Whitehall to say don't go anywhere near it.